Okay, today is the second class of the philosophy seminar. We're going to discuss today the concept of truth and the relationship between the individual and the universal. First of all, the concept of God or the ultimate reality, the absolute reality, in Vedantic philosophy has three qualities, or it is three qualities. The first quality is truth. Now, truth in this case means anything which uh, is eternal. Because if it's not eternal, it means it's just a temporary form. For example, the earth is not eternal. So it cannot be truth. You see, truth is something which doesn't change. It's unchanging. So it has no beginning. It has no end. It goes through no changes. And this only this could be ultimate truth. For example, in a dream, seem, things seem very truthful, very real. But when we wake up from the dream, we realize that it wasn't real. We hear from people who have left their bodies in a death experience and come back that they realize that the body is not real. The body is temporary and they experience themselves as separate from the body. So the first quality of the divine is eternal existence. Now this in Sanskrit is called Sat. Sat. So the first aspect of the divine is that it has no beginning, it has no end, and goes through no changes. The second quality is chit, C-H-I-T. And this is pure, unlimited consciousness. This is omnipresent consciousness. The consciousness which exists in all of the universe, it's the cause of everything which exists in the universe and the cause of everything which happens in the universe. Okay? So the concept that uh, of God's omnipresence is incorporated in the concept of chit. That there is this one consciousness which is everywhere. It is immortal. It has no beginning. It has no end. It has no limitation. So this is the, it's like space, you know, this space is here, a building is created in that space, the building falls down in that space, events happen in that space, beings come into reality, disappear from that space, but the space remains the same. So the consciousness remains always the same regardless of the forms and the events which come into being and move out of being. It's like the white light on the television screen. Uh, forms can appear on any form can be created on that white screen, but its natural state is whiteness. So various images come into being, they disappear, they appear, and they disappear, but the reality is the light of the screen. And that light takes various forms, just as the light at the movie theater takes various forms on the screen, but it's just light. And so consciousness is like light. It's like space. These are two things that we know, that we can pr comprehend, which are closest to understanding what consciousness is. There's a difference between consciousness and conscience. Conscience is that aspect of our higher mind which has the ability to have discrimination which helps us to understand what is useful for our evolutionary process and what is not, and which prevents us from doing harm to other people, prevents us from doing to anyone what we would not like them to do to us. So consciousness is just this awareness, whereas conscience is something more specific, it's becoming aware of specific 
uh, purpose in life. So the first two aspects of the divine are eternal existence and omnipresent, pure, unlimited consciousness. The third aspect is called ananda in Sanskrit, and it means bliss. Now, bliss is different from happiness. Happiness is a pleasant feeling that we have because of some cause. And it ends when that cause no longer stimulates the feeling of happiness. And always with happiness, there will be unhappiness because it's based on something which happens outside of ourselves or even some thought that we have. So we think of something pleasant, it creates happiness. Someone behaves to us in a pleasant way, it creates happiness. Someone behaves in an unpleasant way, something happens which I don't want, which I don't like, which makes me fear, I feel unhappiness. Okay? So bliss is something totally separate. Bliss is the bliss or the feeling of peace and joy of existence. It has nothing to do. My, my existence itself is the source of my pleasure. It has nothing to do with anything that happens or doesn't happen. It's experiencing the fullness of my being. At this point, as, since we don't experience the divine within us, and we experience the ego, we don't experience the fullness of our being. We, feel, we experience the emptiness of our being. And we try to fill that emptiness with people, with money, with objects, with fortunes, with uh, various stimuli, television, work. We try to fill that emptiness with things that are outside of ourselves. Of course, this is a, it's natural, there's nothing wrong with it, but it, it will never fulfill us completely. It will fulfill us only temporarily. And the emptiness will still be there and we'll keep looking and looking until the emptiness is filled by our being itself, by our own self. Only then can we be totally happy because as long as our happiness is dependent on how people behave or what we have or what we don't have or how we ourselves are as a character or as a personality, if we're not satisfied with ourselves, then our mind will be vulnerable to unhappiness. So these three qualities are considered to be the qualities of the divine, of God. Eternal existence, no beginning, no end, no change can take place. Changes take place in the physical universe, but they don't take place in the consciousness. Okay? The, the unlimited consciousness, the omnipresent consciousness, and the undisturbed bliss. These are the three aspects of the divine.